Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel and welcome to our series on Share and Bending Moment Diagram for team with non-uniform distribution loads. Today, that is what you are going to look at, Share and Bending Moment Diagram for teams with non-uniform distributed loads. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and leave your comment as well. Quickly, let's look at our question and how to solve it. Draw the share and bending moment diagram for the cantilever beam. So we can see that now this one is not a distributed, a uniform distributed loop. It is a non-uniform distributed loop. So how do we draw the bending moment and share force diagram for this? Good. And when you get a problem like this, all that you need to do, you don't need to determine the reactions at the support because here, the reaction at the support is just at this point. And we don't need, if there were other forces here, then we need the reaction at the support to determine the forces or the reactions. But since there's only one reaction at the wall, there's no need for determining the reaction at the support. And Looking at the question, the weight varies at every point away from the length. So you can see that we have this steep slope. So it means that the weight at every point on the length is different. The weight on every point on the length is different. So in order to solve this, we need to be, develop an expression for the weight. We know that the weight is pounds per feet. Therefore, the weight at every point, so the weight at this point will be different from the weight at this point, will be different from the weight at this point, will be different from the weight at this point. Therefore, to develop an expression of, for the weight, we say that the total length of the whole structure is four. So at every point, let's take it that this is a point and it is x away from, from the total, it is x distance from the starting point. So the weight is going to be 350 times x. This 350 is the weight at the end here, the weight at the end here. So it's going to be x over 4. So this is going to be our function for the weight. And from here, the weight is going to be 29.17 where S is a distance at any point on the beam. So once you have done that, then let us also try and establish the relationship for whatever we have. So we can draw a nice free body diagram for our structure. So if this is the beam, then our distribution is like that. And we know that this side is 500. The force acting here is 500. And we have 350 pounds per feet. So from here, what we can do, because it's a triangle, if you want, this is a right angle triangle. And we have stated that if we have a right angle triangle, the centroid or the center is located at 1 over 3 at one over three, each over three, or B over three, if it's a right angle triangle. And we said that the one over three is at the larger side. So from here, one over three of this whole length, if you divide into three, then our one over three is going to be at this point. So this is going to be the, the center of the whole structure, which will be X over 
3 or h over 3, and this side will be 2 over 3. So if we want to develop an analysis or we want to develop an equation to guide us to determine the draw the bending moment diagram, what we need to do is to concentrate the force at the center so we can assume that the force is acting at the center. Now, when we assume that the force is acting at the center, then it means that our formula is going to be if the force is acting on the center, then we are going to get our total distribution for the force is going to be we want half half of this we want half of this half of our weight because at the center it is going to be half of the weight so we are going to say that at the center we have one over two of the distance at the center, we are going to get one over two of the distance from this point to that point. Don't forget that we said that the distribution on every at every point on the beam is going to be x over 12. But here we are assuming that x is the total length. So if we are assuming that this point here is the center, then it means that Along the S, this will be, if S is the total length, then this force is going to be at the center. So the weight distribution at the center is going to be half X times the weight distribution, which we have already calculated. So half of the length times the weight. Don't forget that the weight is already pounds per feet. So if you want to get it in pounds, if you want to get the weight in pounds, you need to multiply it by the distance. And we are saying that this point here is at the center. So if it is at the center, then we are assuming that half of the center, half of the total length is the distance. So when we multiply it by the weight at any point in time, it will give us the total weight of the distribution at the center. And that is going to give us one over two X times whatever we have calculated, which we are saying that it is a weight at every point. But this formula is the weight at every point. But what we are looking for here is the weight, the total weight from the starting point up to the center. Take note of that. Is the weight from the starting point up to the center. But what we develop here is the weight at just a single point. So if you want at the center, then we divide the total length by two, and then we multiply it by our weight at that every point, which is 29 points. 17x. So from here, our analysis is going to be we are going to get 14.58x squared. S squared for our force at the center. So our force at the center will have this value. Therefore, if we want to get the shear force and the bending moment, we can get a function to represent since the weight is changing with respect to S. We need a function to represent the shear force diagram. So how do we get a function? We want to represent the whole of this with the force at the center. So we can say that sum of sum of all we can say that sum of all f of y should be equal to zero. Sum of all f of y should be equal to zero. And from there, we can see that this 500 is pointing down. We are now using our equilibrium equation. So negative 500 and our force is here, which we have calculated half. It is pointing downwards. So negative 14.58x. And let's take it that our shear force at every point is going to be V. Our shear force at every point is going to be V pointing downwards, and our moment will be like this. So minus V, we want to develop a function for our shear force. So from here, our V will be equal to negative 800 times negative 800 minus, minus 14 points. 
58x. So this will be s squared. Sorry, this is s squared. So this will be our function for finding the shear force at every point along the length of the beam. At every point along the length of the beam. So if you want to get the shear force at a distance of like two feet, you just put two in place of x and you get your shear force at that point. We can also get an, a function to represent the moment at every point along the line. The sum of moment is equal to zero. So we can say that we have already M1, which is our moment at every point. So M1 plus, so we multiply this force by the distance. So the distance, we are taking moment now at, we are taking moment at this point. Don't forget that we said that you take moment at where you have session. We are taking moment at this side, so we are going to get our force is 14 point, 14 14.58 squared. 14.58 squared times the distance to where we are taking the moment, which is x over 3, which we are saying that that is the formula for determining the centroid of a triangle. At the bigger section, and um, we also have but this is going to produce anti clockwise rotation. It is going to produce anti clockwise rotation if the force is applied here, and this is where you are taking your moment. So, if the rotation is going to be like that, plus our 500 times the distance where we are taking our moment. Don't forget that we are seeing that the total length we are assuming that it is x, so we are going to get 500 times the length from this to that is x is equal to zero, is equal to zero. And from there, we can just develop our shear force. M1 should be equal to negative, if you do the simplification, you are going to get negative 4.86 s cubed minus 500x. So this is the distribution of the bending moment along the length of the beam. And this is the distribution for the shear force along the length. So in this case, we cannot get a single shear force. You need to get this function so that you can be able to get the shear force at every point. So with this, we can determine the moment and the shear force at any distance from the starting point. So we can just draw a table and we use certain values to help us draw our bending moment diagram. So let's take it that this is our shear force at every point, which is given by this function. And this is our moment, which is given by this function. So if the distance is zero, then we put zero into these two equations, we get the shear force and the moment respectively, which is going to be negative 500. On this side, when you put it in the equation, you get zero. When this is equal to 3, we just put it into this shear force and we get negative 6, 2, 6. And we also put it in the bending moment and we get negative 6, 1, 6, 3, 1.2. When the distance is 6, we are going to get negative 1, 0, 0, 4. For the shear force, and this will be negative 40049.8. So you can put in for 9, 12. At 12, which is the total length, you are going to get negative 2516. This will be negative 14398.08. And you can do for the 9. So with this, you can be able to plot the bending and the bending moment and the shear force diagram with the information which you are giving. So with this value at a distance of two, that is the corresponding value for the shear force and the bending moment. So now for the shear force, if I have my diagram according to the length, then if this is for the shear force, the starting point is 500, so this is going to be 500. The next point is negative 6, 2, 6. The 
the next point is negative one zero. You can choose any arbitrary points for this and you draw your shape for it, but it should include the starting point and the end point. Then the next one, the last one is negative two five. So negative two five one six one six. But the negative two five one six occurs at the final length. One zero four occurs when it is halfway. This other one occurs when it is distance of strength. The starting point is this. So at the end of the day, we are going to get something like a curve. If we draw this to scale, it is going to be like a curve which keeps on increasing along. This should be at this. So we are going to get a curve like that, a curve like that for the shape force diagram. And then we just join to this side. And for the bending moment diagram also, we have the values. We can just draw it somewhere here. If we decide to draw it somewhere here, And don't forget that we have stated that bending moments always start from zero. And the first one is zero. The second one is one, six, three, nine, two. The next one is four, negative four, zero, four, nine. The next one is negative one, four, three. This is not drawn to scale. But when you draw it nicely to scale, you see the curve which you are talking about. The last one is for the distance of 12, this is for the distance of six, this is for the distance of one. So it means that that one also, the first one is zero, is going to be a nice curve like that. It's going to be a nice curve like this along that line. So this is going to be our bending moment diagram. Good. So you can just draw it to scale and then you see whatever will happen from there. So that is quite an interesting problem. You can just go through and then familiarize yourself with it. Good. With this, we can say that we are done for today. Thank you for keeping in touch with us and joining us again for this video. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and leave your comments and suggestions as well. Until we meet again, bye-bye.